everything everything seemed to be going normally when they came overhead. They released the spacecraft, lit the engine, and it's a little difficult to tell how long it was, but it burned for a time and, and then just exploded. And how long after that particular sequence, how long was it before it did explode then? Not very long at all? No, no, not at all. Look, looking at the time stamps on my pictures, it was somewhere between, say, 12 and 20 seconds. Uh, and uh, we just heard from uh, the airport director there saying that he, he didn't see or hear an explosion, but there again, you were actually directly looking at it. you pretty much underneath, yes. Um, they're obviously saying that at the moment it's too early to talk about what might have been the cause. There was absolutely nothing leading up to that that appeared abnormal or unusual to you. No, not at all. It seemed to be flying normally, um, very much like it had flown in the other test. And then it, as soon as there was that explosion, I, I understood that something was wrong. It... How many tests, Ken, have you witnessed? How, how sort of closely have you followed the whole process? Um, I'm a local, and I used to work at the Mojave Airport at another aerospace company. And when I started with them, the day I interviewed was the third test flight of White Knight 2. And how badly will this affect the local community and indeed, of course, this, this space program they're talking about? The uh, George Whitesides, the chief executive of Virgin Galactic there in that press conference saying, space is hard. This has been a tough day. It's been a really tough day. It's a pretty small community of, of aerospace professionals out here. And I haven't heard the names of the, the Spaceship Two pilots but it's probably that I, people I have met socially and are probably known in the community. So it's, it's going to be tough on everybody around here. Uh, we're now hearing that obviously the site is secure. We heard from the Deputy Fire Chief Mike Cody. We also heard from the local sheriff there saying that they had effectively practiced to rehearse such scenarios. Uh, and now the National Transportation Safety Board's arrival, I suppose, is the next big step, which I think was at 7.30. Um, yeah, well, it, it can't be too hard to secure because it, it was uh, roads were already closed uh, for roadworks. So the, the sites where wreckage came down are, are very difficult to access. Uh, I was at one site where part of the wreckage landed right on a road. Um, and in terms of the state of the wreckage, there was obviously no particular sign as to what caused it to uh, explode. No, I couldn't make any comment on that. And it was... It was quite horrendous, uh, and the pieces were quite small. So, Over how large an area do you think the, uh, the wreckage is spread? Um, I wouldn't say that it's a contiguous area because the vehicle came apart in, in several pieces, and each one of those impacted in its own area. Uh, and that was quite wide. When they, when they dropped the spaceship, they're at 50,000 feet or approximately oh, yes, nine and a half miles. Area, yes. All right, uh, Ken Brown, the local photographer who witnessed that explosion, we appreciate your time. Thank you.